you go, you're gonna go right down to zero. Boom, the thing launches, right? Yeah. And then you go, you'll take it. You'll, you know, then engines will cut after eight and a half minutes, and yeah. either you're in orbit or today you may, on the real day you'll probably be in or orbit after those eight and a half yeah, minutes. Yeah, gosh, yes. And then, uh, but if, but what will happen today is probably not that on all the runs, right? Not probably not. You know, there's so, probably a good spread. Uh, you know, I'd say we'd practice a, a transatlantic abort landing. We'll practice probably an RTLS return to launch site. Mm -hmm. We'll practice uh, an, an abort to orbit. There's a whole bunch of different flavors. You know, Ascent, you got all these different, you know, tangents that you can take. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, all these different options, and you got to, you know, pick the, the best option. Sometimes the best option isn't fun, but it's the safest option at the time. So. Right. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you get out of these sims? I mean, because obviously, you, I mean, you may, I mean, it might be that you're uh, going to get a, you might, have to, you might have to do one of these boards for real, but but you're getting more than that, and it's not just practicing your board, right? What, what do you look to get out of your team today as the flight director? Well, what are you I mean, to try to you know, I've been working with a lot of these guys for years now, so I pretty much, they know me, I know them. Do you have any ritual you'll do on that day? No. Is there anything you have certain for breakfast or, uh, you know what? You know, you're gonna I, I do, wear a certain tie or anything? The, the tie, um, I'll figure that out. I'm mm -hmm. gonna have a nice tie, you know? <laughs> uh, it was but, a nice one today, Oh, actually. thank you very, very much, nice. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but what I'll do is, uh, it's just, uh, you know, the drive in, just kind of get my, my thoughts together. That's, that's kind of when I put mm -hmm. stuff together. Mm -hmm. And I always have you a listen to Metallica or something like that on the way in? Or, or sometimes. You know, really? It just depends. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. It just depends on the morning. But yeah. usually I have a, you know, a Diet Coke or something. I, I've got to get the Diet Coke. <laughs> so, you know, that's about the biggest ritual, but that's every day. Right. How you doing? Good. Good, see Good to see you, man. Jim, how you doing? How you doing? So where's your tie? I only wear it on special occasions since I don't I'm, I don't usually dress up much. Yeah. You, you got to save it just for the right time. Otherwise, it's not special. I, I, you know, that's a good point. Yeah. So you Richard, wear, he looks the same way every time, every day. You don't wear your game jersey on uh, on a, when you're practicing in the mud. That's right. He's got a good point there. I get dirty. I roll my sleeves up. I get ready. You do. To that's swim. right. I get ready to go. That's right. All right. Well, we don't want to distract because you're, no, you're, you're. What are you doing? You're, you're gonna. You're gonna sign in just, and stuff. Yeah. Just getting everything set. All right. So, so we are getting ready for the asset sim this morning. Our right. fourth one with the 133 crew. All right. And what are you? What are you guys gonna be doing during this sim? Um. Your, your ground control. Here's the thing. Right. It says, ground control. Ground so controllers what does that mean? are responsible for the building itself, making sure that everything's operating so that the rest of the team can get telemetry mm -hmm. into the building. We can get commands up to the arbiter. Also coordinating with the network, in this case a simulated network that's generated by a model over in building five where the, where the other simulators are. And our job is to uh, make sure we have telemetry, command, and voice capability with the arbiter. And whatever that breaks, which we're expecting to happen several times this morning, okay. then we've got to work with the team to uh, restore it as quickly as possible. All right, and the same, on, uh, same thing during the flight, same thing on launch day. Flight. Tell us your name, what are you doing? Uh, I am Mark McDonald. <laughs> My name is Mark McDonald. This is, this, over this is our trajectory officer. <laughs> uh -huh. Did you go to Boston? You went to Boston University? I did. That's pretty cool because most people go to Texas, so Texas A&M around There's here. There's a lot of those, yeah. Yeah. And I went to Colorado. You went to Colorado. <laughs> you, you Along with our guidance officer. Really? You went to Colorado too? This is it's the, the buff, It's the Buff Trench. So this is like the hey! non... I grew up in Nebraska. No. Uh, we are. I don't even know what he talked about. The Buff Trench. Was yeah, that Buffalo. Buffalo. The Col Buffalo. Oh, I see. But you it's grew up in the Nebraska Colorado rivalry. Is there? Football. See, I'm from New York. I have no idea. <laughs> we, just, we just have fights between families. All right. So, uh, what do we got? What do we got going here? What are you, what are you doing right now? What, what, what's going to be your job this morning? Uh, what we typically do, both pre-launch and pre-simulation, is we get the uh, the targets, guidance targets, uh, ready for launch based on the station state vector. Okay. So. Uh, and that's called the IYs. So that's where the shuttle's going to steer to. Okay. Um, so by target, you mean like where you want to put the space shuttle so that it can correct hit the uh, the space station. Correct. And you, so and you, we're sending it up to, to rendezvous on flight J three. Okay, but, but you already know that, right? I mean, you figured this out for for years, right? I mean, for a long. Time, I mean, you know where the station's going to be. Right. But, but it, it, it might be a little bit. You got to. It might be different today, or is it going to be right. different than it, what you? Right. Its altitude will vary, flight to flight, uh -huh. and our. Uh, Topo officers keep track of that uh, very closely. They have to. Topo, uh, what does that stand for? That's uh, 
Trajectory uh, Operations Officer. Thank you. Thank trajectory you. Operations Officer. That's the tra trajectory person on the station side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the final lackey, basically. <laughs> I provide things like that and coffee. And, <laughs> and of course, they're having to maintain a trajectory in coordination with the Russians and other uh, partners to make sure that all of the visiting vehicles are going to be able to rendezvous uh, given their, their performance capabilities. Okay. In relation to the, what, what's that? What, what, is, that uh, is that your mom? That's yeah. a ring box. Mom, <laughs> uh, hey, go mom I'm right in the middle of something. Hey, tell, tell me you're busy. Okay. Who is it? All right, so you really didn't so need, that's you how need to our, pick that up? Who is that? No, I don't need to pick that up. The Topo, it's, our trajectory the operations officer is going to pick that up. Maybe it's the guy telling you the space agent's in the wrong orbit. All right, so we've got, we've got Brian Lunny here. You're a uh, flight morning. director. Yes, Good sir. morning, Brian. Thanks Thank for that. I know you're very busy, but we appreciate you taking a break. Glad here. to be here. And you, you're a flight director. You've done uh, or, done sp shuttle station. Mm -hmm. You're also ascent. Is mm -hmm. that right? Okay. Yes. And if you can tell us what's going on back here. So for each front room person, there's usually a couple of back room people helping them out. The back right. room position usually is a smaller piece of the front room position, so that that individual can come in from college or whatever, a newer guy, mm -hmm. and learn that smaller piece, learn the other smaller piece, then move out to the front room. Right here we have the flight, flight the front dynamics. Room being that room. Yes, sir. Out in the right. mission right. control. All right. Uh, in the back rooms, right. we have the flight dynamics MIPSR, multi-purpose support room, we call them. Okay. And these folks are supporting the flight dynamics and the uh, guidance and procedures officer. Here we have our navigation folks helping us figure out where we're at, which is an important function, we think, right? So these guys help us determine where we're at so that we know where we need to go. That's good. Here we have dynamics folks. Good. Okay, and they feed into who? Who do they? Fido. Flight Dynamics Officer okay. and guidance the two guys down front. Okay, that's so all these folks back here mm -hmm. feed into those yes, two positions in front. Most disciplines, the systems disciplines, will have one or two guys in the back room. Okay. Flight Dynamics has a whole lot more. Because? Because there's a whole lot more going on right. at those consoles and what they're supporting. And plus, it's only for ascent and entry that they do that. And, and, but why, why is this so important during ascent? Why is this... Uh, State because the obvious it's so one. dynamic. Yeah. You got your three main engines driving, you got your two big SRBs driving, and the vehicle's going to, uh, hopefully in the right direction, of course. Right. And they're monitoring the performance to be sure that we hit our MECO targets at the right time. And if you don't hit your MECO targets, your velocity. Main engine cutoff. Sorry, main engine right. cutoff targets, uh, your velocity, your glide path angle, uh, a couple other important parameters to make sure that uh, you're going in the right direction in order to get to station. If you don't do that correctly, you may not even get to orbit. Right. And what, did, what can they control? Because they could, you know, when you're inside the shuttle and the thing goes, it's kind of like, well, this thing's on its way mm -hmm. and we're going wherever we want. But they can actually uh, adjust what's going on while we're sitting there taking our ride. They will ask uh, the pilot to adjust, for example, a throttle setting. Okay. Uh, change how fast the, the throttles engine throttle up from 104% down to 66%, for example, right, right. or whatever they need to do. Okay. Uh, sometimes you go to max throttles for certain main engine out cases, and okay. contingency abort cases. All right. um, one of the counterintuitive things they'll ask you to do is throttle back so you can burn longer for towel targets, which always makes people Transitive. confused. Going over the ocean if we can't yes. make it there. Yes, if All we right. lose an engine early, we end up going over, land, aiming for a landing in Europe, mm -hmm. they'll ask them to throttle back so that we can Say go yes. longer. Yeah, it, sort it, of helps us, it helps the MECO targets, All again, right. the main engine cutoff targets. Okay. So on All this right. side of the back room, yes. what do we got here? you have the, uh, uh, the system, one of the systems, uh, back room personnel. And uh, for example, right here we have the computer folks, uh, the uh, data processing system, uh, supporting the, folks, the DPS officer mm -hmm. up front. We have the ENCO back room, who take care of the communications and instrumentation on board, okay. making sure the S band and the TDRS and the ground and the, talking to the MILA ground sites are working well. Over on the far end, you have the MAX mechanical folks taking care of all the mechanical devices on board, the vent doors, the landing gear, all those big things like that. And then the electrical folks are kind of in between there. Eagle supporting Eagle, they take care of the electrical electrical fuel cells and distribution of electricity throughout the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Then the life support guys and the thermal guys support the ECOM. Uh, they take care of, of course, life support, make sure the cabin air is good. Mm -hmm. And then the thermal makes sure we're doing cooling on the vehicle. Of course, the, inside the vehicle, you generate a tremendous amount of heat from all the computers that yeah. are turned on. So we got to have water loops and freon loops that pull that heat out of the vehicle and dump it out in the radiators. Mm -hmm. uh, and also through the fence. All right. Then over here we have flap evaporator, uh, flap yes. evaporator, uh, evaporator system. All right. Acronyms. Okay. Acronyms. Uh, Lots of acronyms. Guidance navigation control. This is the back room that makes sure they can control the vehicle. And we got sensors and controls. Takes both. So they're sort of the steering wheel, if you will, of the vehicle for right. a car. And then on the far side, you have the propulsion guys and the booster guys. The prop guys do the Ohms RCS, which are the small rocket engines you don't see during launch and uh, 
that you do use during entry. To the left of them is the booster mat back room that does the main engines that are the big rocket engines we see at launch. So again, the same idea. Take your one discipline, that one systems guy out front, mm -hmm. break his system up in a couple of small pieces, and then divvy it up here in the back room for someone to specialize in so they can learn that discipline and then uh, train them to help you out during the, during the flight. Who made the cake? You make the cake? I make the cakes. What's your name? Kathy Bupain. Kathy? Mm hmm What's your last name? Bupain. Bupain. Uh-huh. Okay. And you make every one of these cakes? I do indeed. You do? I do. So every this mission. Is, this is the special launch cake? Yeah. Which is the carrot cake? Yes. And We've it, only changed it a couple times. And they don't okay. like it when we change it. All right. So this is why. This is one of the reasons you simulate. You have a simulation as well. This makes sure everybody likes the cake. Yeah, that, right? it's kind of a, a well, we haven't had a mission in quite a while, so I sim them every once in a while, and I've okay. discovered I have a thermal issue with my uh, with my oven, so it'll have to be fixed before we go to launch. It just seems <laughs> that is, that's why we simulate. It's not just right. to make sure that we know what we're doing with the space shuttles, that you get the cake right. That's right. And you can make changes. You can adapt to the change. All right, so. So they can't fly without my cake. All right, what else do you do here beside the cake, though? You must I used something. to be a TAO. I used what to sit that? down, the trajectory applications officer. Okay. We manage the server that uh, produces the trajectory during the flight. But okay. now I work for FDOC, and so I. No, that's uh, that's. But what contract. does? Yeah, it's a new contract. So I do mostly sustaining work and uh, contract paperwork. Okay, and and the cakes. And the cake. Well, the yeah, cakes on I come to do support for missions, so I support the three primary phases. So. Okay. So it's the carrot cake for, for Aslan. It, there's a coffee cake for a rendezvous. Yeah. And there's a chocolate cherry cake for landing. Let's see, Fido and DC turn around for run number uh, three. All those meet one in. All right, so how did it go? Wow, that was a that was probably the oddest RTLS I've ever seen. I don't know if you guys saw the trajectory up front, but uh, we, we I don't think we got any film of it, but uh, we can see a little bit of it here. Can you see it? what are we seeing here? That's just well, the uh, that, that the part's hack. the nominal part. But yeah. uh, the uh, the crew had to take manual control uh, mm -hmm. to overcome an engine out that was not recognized. And uh, gosh, the it was it was a rough one, but uh, successful. But you made it back. Yeah, from a sim perspective. Yes. <laughs> yes. I am the asset entry econ for 133. Okay, which means what? which means that I work launch and landing, and I take care of Very all the good, environmental control systems for okay, the shuttle. Which is, uh, the air they breathe, uh, their temperature control, right. the water they drink, all, all right. the good stuff. All that stuff for, yeah. the, for the crew. Um, and uh, what happened, you, you've had two, you've had, this is a sim day, simulation right. day, morning, but, but you can fit a few different runs of simulations in those four hours, so you've had right. two so far. How's it going so far? Um, so far, it's been pretty good. We had yeah. a, a cabin leak the first run, oh, and we were able to isolate. It was coming out of the cabin. All right, you were able to stop it. Yeah, well, That's it good. turned out it was in the airlock. So thank goodness we were able to stop it. Well, then you can't use the airlock, right? Okay. Well, it depends on the leak size. If you, right. can, if you have consumables on board to be able to feed the leak, then sometimes you can reopen okay. the airlock just to get certain things out and then close right. it back up tight. Okay, because you need that for the tunnel to get to the space station, don't exactly. you? Exactly. If you dock, that could be an issue. Okay, so you'd have if this was a real problem. You'd be figuring out whether or not you could. Continue. If we had enough gas on gas board to be able to feed right. the leak, okay. yeah, and get things out, and we had to go in there anyway and get out the suits, because you yeah. don't want the suit, the EVA suits, to no. get down to vacuum, because that can decertify them. So we got to right. go in there and pull those things out, okay. and then close it all back up. All right, all right, but you found out where the leak was. Did yeah. you end up stopping it then, or no? Yeah, we stopped it. We closed up the airlock completely, made sure that we can completely isolate it. And then okay. once we knew that we could close it out, then we reopened it, got the suits out, and closed it back up tight. Okay, you did this after the after the launch, and you had him doing this stuff? We had him doing all this, um, all this post Miko. Post, okay, so that's what you had the crew doing after they... So you had to leak all the way through the ascent. Well, we picked it up about, I think, about five minutes into five the flight. Five minutes you had it, but it was until the crew got out of their seats to close it. Yeah, there's some valves on the airlock hatches oh, yeah. that they close, and that'll stop it. Okay, good. All right, so... Uh, that was the first run, you said. Yeah. What happened on the second, the second practice the run? The second run, we didn't have too much. It was an RTLS run, and so for us, it was just monitoring all the nominal. Return to the launch site. They return, come back around. And, yes. Okay. So we were monitoring so. all the normal stuff. We're going through all of our different cooling configurations that we use, going uphill and then coming back down. Right. So we were on the, the FEST going uphill, which is the flash, flash evaporator Thank system. You. Mm -hmm. For a while, and then post Miko, post engine shutdown, then we go to ammonia, and we use we have ammonia cooling to the ground on an RTLS. So just monitoring all that okay. nominal stuff, making sure everything goes okay. Yeah, you talked about breathing air for the crew and temperature for the for the crew, but it's well, it's temperature for this equipment too, right? Because oh, right. that's really what's I mean that generates a lot of heat. 
Right. I mean, we have a lot of hot air, <laughs> but uh, but it's also the heat from the uh, from the equipment. From the right? vehicle, yeah. yeah. The, for the first run, actually, we did have some problems with cooling. The flash evaporator shut down, so we had to go through and do some restarts on that and restore cooling. Right. Um, because if you don't have cooling on the vehicle, you have to come home. That's all good. You need time to cool. It's very important. Right. All right. So you handle the cooling. It's not just keeping the crew comfy, but keeping the, the entire, space shuttle. Yeah, the entire keeping vehicle. Keeping the space shuttle comfy. And you got you. We, we saw some of the folks in your back room that are feeding you information and you're working here with the flight director. And, right, I have and two great stuff. back rooms. I have a life support and a thermal. All right, and they, and they feed you information so you can help make decisions based on the data you're Exactly. You're How do you like doing this stuff? This I like it a you? lot, it is. You it's like coming great. to work this morning? It was like, oh darn it, I've got to see. <laughs> what was it, what was it fun? No, this is in? an exciting thing to be able to come and do. Yeah, come in here and do it. Yeah, how, it's really you, great training. How'd you get to do this stuff? Is this something you want to do since you were younger? Or, I or, did actually, I wanted to do it probably since I was in junior high. So. Did you a what? Since I was in junior high, probably. In junior high? Okay. Yeah, so it's been a while. Where'd you grow up around here? Where you I did. I grew up in Clear Lake, went to Clear Lake High School. Oh, so my kids go now. Oh, really? Yeah, so maybe there's, there's yeah. hope. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice school to go to. I did. It? Yeah, nice, nice yeah it was great. Okay. All right, Cheryl, thanks very much for visiting with us. You got no another run coming up here quickly? Yeah, or? a couple more. I think we might have a break, though, first. Here? Yeah. Okay, you need, what, what's going on? Do you with the crew right now? Yeah. All right, do you need to pay attention to what's going on? I didn't have any failures, so I'm right, probably okay. All right, you're All right. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> thanks. All right. And you're the booster guy. Correct. So we're looking at the three engines. We're looking at data for the external tank, yeah. data for the solid rocket boosters, right. and data for some of the valves within the orbiter. Okay. And some of our data was telling us that the center engine might have failed. Might have failed. Might have failed. We couldn't <gasps> confirm that it was out. Yet. Okay. And so a lot of the discussion just just went on about how we could confirm that it was out if we didn't have some some backup cues. All right. And uh, we ended up going on an RTLS or return to launch site yeah. trajectory. Okay. And you should but that was not the right thing maybe to do. No, it what? was the right thing to do. The engine had failed. It did fail. Yeah. It took us about a minute to figure out that yes, it was out. Okay. And uh, so we had the crew perform the, the RTLS aboard. Okay. So it all worked out okay. It did. All right. What was it like for you? Was it pretty hairy? It was hairy for the first uh, couple of minutes because you couldn't tell if that engine was running and the flight director is looking for you to, to tell him yes or no and you just don't have any data <laughs> telling, you, telling you either way. So what made you decide that it actually was out? When we got, to near, when we got near SRB separation, yeah. the acceleration was about 0.6 Gs. And when the solid rockets were going to leave. Exactly. Right. Normally it's about 0.9 Gs. Okay. So our inclination was that, yeah, it had failed, and right. we told the crew to, to get ready for the RTLS aboard. Okay, so that's what, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, so how do you like doing this? Was it fun for you, or was it? A, oh, it's a blast. Yeah. It's, it's stressful. <laughs> Literally. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's stressful, uh, but it's fun. Exactly, yeah. All right. And had, know, they have to make it stressful on us here in the simulations and give us a lot of crazy failures because, you know, when that one thing, if one thing does fail on uh, actual launch day, it can be... Very stressful. Right. And how long have you been doing this, Rick? For just over four years. Four and years. And this, this flight, STS-133, will be my first flight as booster. In the in the front room. In the front room. So yeah. you're pretty excited. Oh yeah. 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 It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. All right. As you said, it is a blast. Yes. All right, man.